The Type 10 is finally here and today I'm going to show you my build for hunting Thargoids. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Elite Dangerous with Down to Earth Astronomy. Today I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with my Type 10 uh, when it comes to hunting Thargoids. And I should say here before we begin, this is not going to be a full-on ship review. This is just going to be a, um, a rundown of the loadout that I'm going to use. And I'm going to tell you what engineering modification we're going to put on it. I have not fully engineered the ship, of course, yet. Um, it's just going to be the loadout that I'm going to use. So, let's get into the outfitting and let's start by having a look at the core internals. Because that's probably the easiest. Military grade alloy, because you want that extra... Um, extra armor hit points again it seems like the thargoids are doing absolute damage rather than a specific damage type so the resistance seems to not be that important uh, i am not too not that experienced with the, with the thargoids that i'm too sure about that but it seems like at least that pure hit points is going to be going to be what uh, what the game is all about so therefore i would recommend going for heavy duty heavy duty um military grade composites that's at least what i'm going to go for Everything in, in here is um, is A-rated, and the power plant, as you can see down here with the current build, we are actually running over power when we deploy. So we will have to put an overcharged power plant in, and we will of course begin to use even more power when we begin to uh, to engineer the, some of the modules. But I think we can make do with a grade 2 or grade 3 overcharged power plant, so we don't have to go all the way to grade 5 and get that extra, extra heat uh, efficiency by going to a lower grade. Thrusters, 30 drive for additional maneuverability. Frames with drive, long range, just because it's nice to have. Life support, uh, not going to do anything about that. Just keep that as it is. The power distributor, I'm either going to go weapon focused or charge enhanced. I'm not really sure. I'm going to try the ship out and see how it handles without any engineering. And then based on that, I'm going to decide if, um, if I'm having problems keeping my power to my weapons, I would probably go charge enhanced. Um... Or maybe I'm going to go weapon focused. Um, that depends. I'll, I'll wait and see what the, um, how the ship handles once I get it out and, and tries it out. But um, at least here, I'm most likely I'm going to go with charge enhanced. Sensors. Um, here, I'm considering going long range because we... Oh, sorry, not long range. Going lightweight for getting that extra maneuverability. The sensors is one of the heaviest modules on the ship. This is not too bad. It's only a class 4 sensor, so it's only 10 tons. So... You can go long range without uh, losing too much um, in terms of maneuverability, but if you want to, lightweight is also an option because we're not really that dependent on our sensor range when it comes to hunting Thargoids. Fuel tank is unchanged. Keep that as a stock fuel tank. Okay, uh, let's move on to the, uh, to the optional internals. In the optional internals, I've gone for an 8A prismatic shield generator again the game is all about getting as much hit points as you can that's at least what i've been going for so here we'll go with reinforced shields shield cell banks not going to engineer that right away you can go specialized i think it is um or rapid charge rapid fire on it remember to use a 7b because not a 7a because 7b has an extra charge compared to the 7a so um, that's very very useful. That's why I always recommend going for, for B rated when it comes to shield cell banks. Um, but this is not going to be something that I'm going to engineer right away. That is maybe something I'll do along the line later on. Then a 60 fighter hanger. You this is where you have a bit of an option. You can change out the fighter hanger for another shield cell bank if you want to. If you are not planning to bring an NPC crew member or not planning to have her friends come along in um, and take control of the fighters. I would, however, do if you're going with a fighter hanger. I do recommend going for a, a six a class six because you get that extra fighters. So you don't have to wait because it's, it's a fairly long wait between the fighters if they die, which it most likely will. So it's gonna allow you to keep the fighters in the fight for longer. Um, but again, that's something you can change out here if you're gonna go with a second shield cell bank. You can do that. Then comes all the armor, hull reinforcements in the class five and class four slots. The two class three slots are used for modular reinforcements. And as you say, hull reinforcements, I'm planning to go heavy duty on those. More reinforcements cannot be engineered. And I opted for a single corrosive resistant cargo rack in the class 2 slot. Just to get that little bit of cargo in case we want to pick something up 
we don't really have any use for the modules or the things that the Dark Horse dropped just yet. But I'm expecting we will have the future, so I, that's why I decided to go for a, a class 2, um, I'll go for a, a corrosion resistant cargo rack here. And the two military compartments are also going to be 5D hull reinforcements, also heavy duty. Again, to get as many hit points as we possibly can out of the ship. Let's, uh, I'm going to save the best for last, let's move on to the utilities. Not too much uh, exciting stuff in here, we have a heat sink to try and manage the heat when it comes to um, to the shield cell bank. And remember guys, if you get hit by the um, by the corrosion effect, if you overheat your ship sufficiently, um, you can actually get rid of the corrosion the uh, yeah the corrosion effect from your ship by overheating uh, and by burning it off like that. So sometimes, if you are taking corrosive damage and your shields are low, you can actually just fire a shield cell bank and it uh, then not fire a heat sink, and you will then burn off the corrosion effect while still recharging your shield. So that's an option there as well. Uh, see on scanner, of course, so we can uh, can scan the thing and fight the hearts. Shutdown pulse neutralizer, of course, also makes, should be pretty uh, self-explanatory, makes a lot of sense why we fit that. The rest of it is 0A shield boosters, which of course is also going to be heavy duty, so we can get more shield hull points out of this ship. Um, that is the plan, of course, have five of those with the eight optional internals. And finally, let's move on to the hard points. For the hard points in the four large compartments, I've gone for uh, multi cannons, um, AX multi cannons, of course. You can switch out some of the multi cannons for uh, for missiles. Maybe go two multi cannons to missiles. It really depends if you're gonna be playing in a wing with other people or playing solo. Remember that the multi cannons can do damage to both the hull. And to the hearts, um, of course, they're most efficient against the hearts. Where the missiles can only do damage to the hull, they do no damage through the hearts. Um, so you can actually take down a Thargoid without the missiles by just taking down the hull with the multi cannons. So that's why I uh, I'm going for this uh, route. But if I'm going to play in a wing and we're low on missiles, um, we can't go. I will probably fit some of them for for missiles uh, in, instead. And uh, again, that. Um, that depends on your specific case, what you're going to do with the with the weapons here. For all the medium slots, I've got a remote flag launcher, so we can get those um, get those dark on swarms down very, very quickly. And the it's a little bit with the camera angles here that they there's a little bit of a bug here, but the weapons are actually spread out quite neatly around the ship, um, which in many cases would be a thing you would really want to avoid. Really, you want your weapons to be clumped together very closely. But I think with the remote flak, because they are an area of effect weapon, that's actually a pretty good idea um, to uh, to have them spread out like that. And then I got with beam lasers down here, um, which you can go with healing beams. Um, if you want to, that's the engineering mod I'm planning to put on uh, on the beams here. Maybe I'm going to do it with something else here. You can do whatever you want down here, basically. Uh, I just think some kind of thermal damage is a good idea, so we can take down the shields. And... I need to say a huge thank you to um, to Emsilos from uh, from the channel's community, who is our in-house Thargoid expert, who was basically the guy who came up with this build. Um, I consulted him before making this video, um, and this is the build we came up with. This is the one I'm going to go for. So thanks a lot, Emsilos, for, for the help. And um, before we end, um, I also want to say... Um, if you want to uh, support the channel, either join the community, subscribe to uh, to the channel so you get these videos. Because I will have a video at some point in the future where we take the ship out and actually try it. Because of course I'm still sitting right now in Shinrasha, uh, quite far away from the um, from the Pleiades sector. I just want to get this video out to you as quickly as I could. But I will take this out. There will be content where I will take this out and test it properly. So you can see how this action performs in, uh, in combat. And especially after beginning to get some engineering modifications on it. Um, but for now, I'm going to um, to leave this video here. I uh, let me know if what you think of the build. What are you gonna do? How are you gonna fit your Type Ten? Um, yeah, thanks a lot for watching. Like the video, give it a like, and until next time, I'll see you guys in space.